My guest today is Andre Ballas. Andre, how you doing? Good, Dave. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Code Mesh is almost over. It is. I'm really sad about that. That's I know. The last talk I saw was yours. Oh. <laughs> and um, uh, what was it on? You tell me. Well, um, my talk was about two-factor authentication. It's kind of a hot topic nowadays. It is. Okay. So um, I remember in the old days we had usernames and passwords, mm -hmm. and we all thought that was enough because <laughs> it was something that only I knew. Yes. Uh, that my password was, in fact, the word password. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that we realized that people could steal that information. And so we came up with two-factor authentication. We thought that was good enough <laughs> until I saw your talk, and now it's not, right? Um, well, it still is, but okay. it depends on what your second factor is. Um, oh, okay. So just to begin, let me talk for, uh, really quickly about a very common type of attack that affects um, credentials or usernames and passwords. Uh, and, and that is just a common uh, phishing attack. Uh, phishing is a very common attack where uh, emails are sent out that look very legitimate, right? right? So I'm not talking about the emails from like the, the Nigerian prince that's offering you $4 million because that's, everyone knows by now that that's, there's only a small chance that that's legitimate, right? Wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, only sometimes. Oh, I've never fallen for that one. <laughs> Um, h however, uh, you know, they're starting to get more clever and they're sending you something that's a little bit more realistic. Like uh -huh. I, get, I just got one the other day that said something like, oh, well, your Amazon order um, was shipped late. Like it came later than we expected. Here's a $5 credit, right? All right. That's totally legitimate, especially, you know, December before mm -hmm. Christmas. That happens all the time. I'm sure everyone's right. had a package. So if you got that email, you'd, you'd probably be convinced, oh, that's, yeah. that's legitimate. Let me click that. And you might not notice at the uh -huh. top of the browser that, hey, I'm not logged into Amazon. I'm logged into some... You know, devious site right because the site looks a lot like Amazon site absolutely yes yeah they're actually um, very recently there was a tool released uh, it's called Mudlishka and this is a tool released by a Polish researcher that actually automates a lot of that process so you could just point it at a website uh -huh. link people to it and it'll just start stealing credentials oh wow. you just impersonate them and you know it's it's pretty pretty incredible how uh, sophisticated the tools are getting nowadays to, right. um, to do this hmm. so all right, so uh, that's and that, that's why there's problems with just just entering a password because you could be tricked into entering your password even if nobody ever steals it. Yeah, and, and actually the phishing uh, that's that's why uh, two-factor authentication is not as secure as we had like liked because it's not just about the password. Uh -huh. These tools are sophisticated enough now to actually go through the whole process of doing the two-factor with you. Oh, I see. So you, the, the, this idea that the two-factor is something you know, password, mm -hmm. and something you have like your phone. Yes, exactly. But, but uh, if you if you're convinced it's Amazon or or your bank or whoever, mm -hmm. uh, and you have your phone, you're still going to use your phone to enter the the text code or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Because what happens is on the back end, they're entering your real credentials into the real site. Uh -huh. So it's sending you a real text from real Amazon uh -huh. with okay. the code. Mm -hmm. You're just okay. being tricked into. And then they're, then they're logging as you. Yes, exactly. Uh, right. They'll impersonate you and then do who knows what. <laughs> uh, what's the answer? Um, so uh, <laughs> there's. <laughs> There's a couple answers. Um, the one, 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 sorry, the one I want to talk about today is universal two-factor. Uh, uh, I want to talk about universal uh, two-factor. So universal two-factor is a standard that was developed developed jointly uh, by Google and a company called Ubico out mm. of Silicon Valley. Mm. And Ubico is a company that actually makes these little uh, keys. I don't know if okay. you can see. There's these little. Uh, keys that you can authenticate with. They plug into a USB port? Yep, they plug into a USB port. And mm -hmm. actually, this one's interesting because it'll even uh, work wirelessly over NFC with a cell phone. Oh, and I'll show you how that works in right. a minute if you'd like to see. Sure. Um, right. uh, one interesting thing I want to point out, though, that uh, I actually read an article recently that uh, Google, about a year and a half ago, I believe, um, they, uh, I'm going to read a quote directly from the article. We have had no reported or confirmed account takeovers since implementing security keys at Google. So that's, that's, that's very these powerful. these keys right here. Yeah, that's these kinds of keys right here. Yeah, I actually just asked the, um, my friend John re very recently. Works for Google. <laughs> works for Google, and I showed him one of these, and since I have one just like it. Uh -huh. So um, awesome. very similar. <laughs> John Skeet, he was on this show the uh, day before yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so anyways, um, so this universal two-factor um, is this new standard, and uh, these keys are compatible with that standard. Now, there's a lot of words that are thrown around. There's FIDO, CTAP, U2F. So I want to clear that up really quickly because there's a lot of misconceptions about what those things ever mean. Mm -hmm. So FIDO uh, stands for Fast Identity Online. Uh, it is a standards body. Now, it, uh, I guess, owns or maintains the standard called CTAP 
one and two, okay. which is the client authenticator protocol. Hmm. So that's the protocol between the authenticator right. and the actual device, the, you know, their browser operating hmm. system, um, whatever. Um, sorry, the client, I mean. Um, and that can be referred to as either CTAP1, U2F. Uh, those are common things that they refer to as. Mm -hmm. um, people often also call them FIDO keys, and that's fine too. Even though FIDO is the body, if you say FIDO key, you know you're talking about one of these. Okay. Okay. Then there came version two, the FIDO2 keys. Right. Uh, FIDO2 keys, uh, so FIDO2 is another standard. It really just complements FIDO1. All it's right. a newer standard, so it's not as widely used uh, just yet. You were picking this one up. Does that mean this one implements FIDO1 and this implements FIDO2? Correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have two different keys here. This is a FIDO1 key, uh -huh. uh, this black one, right. and uh, this supports NFC and OTP and a lot of these older uh, ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the FIDO2 key, this one I believe supports FIDO2 as well as uh, U2F. So you can use this one in either scenario. Oh, okay. All but, right. but the, the they, black they one... They physically look the same other than the color. Yeah, they physically look the same. This one has a little number two on it. I think that's how you know it's a FIDO2 key. All right. <laughs> um, so the interesting thing about FIDO2, though, is what, what they're allowing you to do is now uh, use a system called um, basically passwordless single factor. Hmm. where you are logging in using only an authenticator okay. instead of any other uh, additional information. Hmm. And you're probably thinking, well, that is that secure? All right. Because right? it's That's just exactly that. what I was thinking. <laughs> um, and it, uh, according to FIDO, uh, basically they, they, they say that, yes, it, it, is, it can be more secure than SMS or things like that. Um, but I think what's going to end up happening is, uh, and it's actually happening now where these keys are coming out with different um, additional I guess hardware or different things on them. Mm. Like for example, if you had one of these keys with a fingerprint rather than just a touch button, right? Oh, then if somebody stole your key, that it wouldn't work for them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Do I need um, Do I need this for my application? I mean, if I have a mobile application that requires somebody to log in, how important is it that I I go to this? Uh, what do we call it? Two factor. Um, uh, you call it F F2 yes, the U2F or U2F, FIDO or FIDO2. Me. Let's just call it FIDO or FIDO2 yeah. just to make it easier. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, it's so I, I think today, if you if you're going to implement an application today, mm -hmm. um, the most common method I, th I see people using that's not SMS, like the next step from that, is using like the Google Authenticators and the Microsoft Authenticators. Okay, like a single sign on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, or, or is that like? Or, it, or is that, I guess I'm thinking. I was thinking of like logging in with your Google account or your Facebook account. Is that what you're talking about? Um, no, not that's not what I mean. So oh, what sorry. I mean is uh, re using an actual Authenticator app as your second factor. Mm. So rather than using an SMS code. Um, the way that works is using something called a one-time password. Okay. Um, or it's actually a time-based one-time password. So every okay. 30 seconds, both your device and your application are, you know, they're at the same exact time, they're always going to generate the same exact, you know, hash, essentially. I see. So just comparing. So you link them up initially by making sure that they're sharing the same key. Mm. And then later, you're computing on those keys to make sure that they're actually the same. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a device that you think it is. Okay. Um, so one thing I can show you that's kind of interesting is uh, you can actually use these things um, not just with the USB, which you'd expect that they would work, where you plug them in and tap them to sign in, um, but they also work right on your phone using NFC, if you have an NFC enabled. Um, oh, I want to see that. Before you do that, though, I want to mm -hmm. tell me about the, as a software developer, what do I oh. need to do to implement this? Oh, sure. Um, so to implement these keys, um, for, the, for the U2F keys, there's a library called U2F.core. Okay. Um, it's got a pretty good demo. Uh, is, built. That a, is that a .NET library? It's a .NET library. Okay, so yeah. it's only for .NET. Mm -hmm. All right. yep. So if you go on NuGet and search for U2F.core, um, that's where you would find the library where you could start actually integrating with the the U2F or FIDO1 standard. Hmm. Um, there's also another separate library for the FIDO2 standard. Um, it looks really great, but I haven't used it yet to be able to give you an, any uh, insight as to how that's going. But, okay. but FIDO2, it's still a very new standard, so uh, there's really not a whole lot of adoption of that just yet. So is it a matter of adding a class to your application to handle the security and then writing some code, or is it is it more plug and play than that, or what? Um, I guess it really depends. Right now, it's a lot more work, just okay. because of um, there's not as much out there hmm. um, for these things. However, if you want to just get started with something that's very fast and still secure enough for most cases, um, I'd probably recommend using the authenticators with the one-time passwords hmm. um, because as of ASP.NET 2.1, um, that's actually built right into the templates out of the box. Oh, nice. So if you just start, you know, final project, um, create a uh, application where you're using, you know, ASP.NET Core application, uh -huh. version 2.1, 2.2, or later, and you're using the individual user accounts, 
um, it'll wire everything up for you, and really you just have to um, almost just hit F5 and, and run. It's uh, very easy to get going. All right, cool. All right, let's see this thing in action. Okay, excellent. So here we have, I'm just going to go to the uh, Ubico demo. Should I move the camera? Um, I can try to hold it up to the camera. Okay. Um, but you would try and hold that for me? Yeah. Only? I need both hands for this. So I'm at the Ubico demo site, and I want to register a U2F device. So here you can see I'm just at the page. Is that going to come through? I don't know. Is it too bright? Let's give it a shot. I'm going to lower my brightness really quick. Let's see. There we go. That, that works. Good. All right, so you see I'm about to register uh, with this application. And right now I've entered my username and my password. So I'm going to tap this register button. And it's going to ask me for my authenticator. All I need to do is just put it right near the back of the phone. And it's going to ask me, you know, how do I want to open this? I'll open it in my browser. And now you probably can't read that. But now, congratulations, you have successfully authenticated with the YubiKey Neo. So oh, wow. I've already registered it with the application. So that's, that will be the user's experience in using mm -hmm. one of these. And then logging in, you know, again, enter my user and password, and when it prompts me, I just need to touch the back of the phone, and I'm in. So from a user experience, it's actually pretty easy and pretty you know, user-friendly to get uh, working nice. with it. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the computer, of course, it'll be the same thing, but rather than touching it, you're going to put this into a USB slot. Okay. And then when it's time, it'll light up to let you know it's time to press a button and uh, do the thing. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so people that are getting started this uh, with this, uh, the application developers are the ones that are going to be implementing this. And the organization, it'd, be, it'd be more organizations that have, uh, that can mm -hmm. distribute these keys to their employees, I think, right? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of applications written today, you're depending on third-party identification servers anyway. Okay. So identity okay. server or one of, you know, one of the cloud-based services that are out there for authentication. Yeah, like Auth0 or something like that? Mm -hmm. So if you're using those, it's really on them to implement them. I think most of them have already done that. Okay. Um, but if you wanted to do it yourself, um, it would be you know a little bit more problematic than that. All right. And uh, where, where do you go to learn more about this? Um, I think the, the best resource is if you just... Um, I, I th there's a really great blog by a guy named Scott Brady. Mm -hmm. um, he has a great blog about these topics or topics related to this. And there's actually one post in particular where he has a primer on FIO2 and a uh, functional proof of concept working. Excellent. So if you want to dig into the source code and see you know, how it actually does all those things, that's a great starting point, I think. All right. What's, uh, what's next for you? Are you going to do doing some speaking in the future? Um, I, yes, absolutely. Um, more about um, these kinds of keys and tokens. Yeah. and you know. Do you have anything scheduled? Uh, yes, I have. Actually, I'm doing this talk again in, at Foxconn. <laughs> oh, in Toledo. In Toledo. Uh, I'll miss that. I've been there. It's, it's a fun time. Oh, very yeah. In, very intimate conference. Yes, absolutely. It's a good one. <laughs> Andre, thanks so much. Yes, thank you, David. Nice seeing you again. It's really nice of technology to bring friends together. <laughs>